So hello, today I'm going to do the next part of how to create a portrait. It's the way that I create portraits. I'm doing a portrait of a woman named Lady of Fire Poetry. She's a patron on my Patreon. So in order to show my appreciation for becoming a patron on my Patreon, I've been doing this series of um, how to draw a portrait. Um, using colored pencil. I know everybody is not going to draw a portrait exactly in the same stages and process as I do, but that's what makes each individual artist different <laughs> and unique. So let me show you where we're at with the uh, drawing. So we've gotten pretty far. This is what she looks like now from the drawing. And what I'm going to start to do today is add more color into the face and the neck and the chest area to define um, more of her character, more of the, the skin, the face, you know, fill that out, bring out the features, make them look more prominent with adding more color. Whoops. With adding more color to the face and the chest and neck area. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And as you remember, this is the reference I'm using. As I said before, it's not going to look exactly like her, I don't think. Um, I think it's going to have the essence and the uh, energy of this person. When I look at her, this is what I see. So yeah. <laughs> this is Mother Earth kind of vibe to her that I get when I'm creating this. So I'm going to get out my colored pencils. Oh gosh, if I don't move the camera all over the place. And let's see. I hope you guys are enjoying your day. Whatever it is you're doing. Today is uh, Tuesday for me. Tuesday afternoon and what better thing to do on a Tuesday afternoon than to draw. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do, like I said, is just going to add some more color to your face and neck and chest area. So the color that I'm going to use is this yellow. It's like a lemon yellow. It kind of looks like a little green in it. And they're calling it chartreuse, yellow chartreuse. So I'm going to come in with some yellow chartreuse. I'm just going to color, you know, just kind of shade it in, just kind of lightly blend in some some yellow into the skin so that it's not so pale. So see how I'm doing so far? With a lot of people that are of, uh, that have brown tones, basic brown tone for the skin, they have combination of different colors within the skin, different pigments. <clears throat> With me, for instance, I'm brown, and what makes my skin brown is that I have a lot of reds and uh, yellows in my skin. Some people that have brown skin have more blues, blue in their skin. So, just all depends on the person. So yeah, this is turning out pretty good so far. I'd like to take my time with my art and do it step by step. That's why I've been working on this drawing step by step. I don't try to do art all in one day. I don't like have a goal of finishing a project all in one day. That has happened before. <laughs> That's pretty rare, but it has happened before, so. But, but it hasn't happened lately. <laughs> yeah, what, what I have to do it takes time and effort, and uh, I have to be in a relaxed mood like Anne right now. <laughs> You know, the face can can seem like it's really challenging to draw, but if you look at it in this matter, is that each face has shapes, each face has uh, shadows and light, and the shadows and light can have a shape to it as well, so, yeah. It's easy to simplify. Um, it makes drawing easier when you simplify things that you see whether it's a face, whether it's a butterfly, whether it's a tree, whatever it is, if you're able to simplify it down to just shapes, then you pretty much come close to getting capturing the essence of what it is you're trying to draw. And once you capture the essence of what you're trying to draw, then you get closer and closer to a likeness. So that's how I feel about it. That's what I've experienced. I have made drawings that look very photorealistic and um, 
I think that had a lot to do with being able to do that had a lot to do with me uh, drawing portraits every single day and drawing portraits um, you know with the aim of just being able to um, get really good at the face and proportions and things like that having the eyes line up as much as possible and things like that so yeah so this is how she looks so far when we're adding yellow into it I'm gonna add a little bit of red in there next so because I do see not so much in this photograph that I'm working from but in the photographs that I've seen her where it's not just sepia color it's all colors um, she does have some red Lady of Fire Poetry has some red in her skin tone. So let me grab some red. Yeah. I'm using these Prismacolor pencils. They're called Scholar. Um, I prefer the colored pencils. I've used all kinds of colored pencils, cheap, expensive. I prefer the colored pencils that, uh, that are more of the like, charcoal-y, like, you know, lead. There's some, the cheap ones are usually the ones that have, uh, that are like plastic, not plasticky, waxy, like wax. When you get the cheap colored pencils. So that's how you can tell the difference a lot of times. That's one of the ways, I think, for people. Not I think, I know. That, that is definitely. It was, um, what were those names of pencils? I know the Crayola made some colored pencils that were very waxy. So, and those kind of pencils, they're made for people that are just doing, I guess doing it as a hobby maybe, not really wanting to do it all the time. But if you start doing art all the time, you start to notice that certain, certain materials work better than others. So, you just learn to find out what works best for you. So, I'm trying not to go too far with the red because I don't want to go too dark with the red. So we got the red going on in there. See that? So it's coming along so well, so good. So yeah, I'm gonna continue with that. What I'm gonna do with that blank space, you see how there's blank space in the corners like here, here, down here, down here. What I'm gonna do, because the thought came to me because I kept saying that Lady of Fire Poetry reminds me, it makes, she makes me think of Mother Earth. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> is just add some leaves in the background when I'm done. I think that'll be a very nice touch. And I try to like uh, fill out the page when I'm drawing. I learned that from my art teacher when I was taking art my, uh, my junior year, I think, is when he first taught me these kind of things. His name was Mr. Stone King. And he was a very patient and kind man who really helped his students with uh, learning how to draw, learning how to paint, learn the basics, learned how to do a different headshot, like three-quarter view, side view, front on view. We learned how to, uh, geez, we learned a lot of things. We learned different styles of drawing learned about different artists and their styles of drawing. Yeah, I liked, I liked art a lot. Art class a lot. Obviously I like art. <laughs> I liked art class a lot. It was so much fun. I loved it. It was my favorite class. <clears throat> it was a place I could be free. Free to just create whatever I wanted to create. And not think about whether or not it's good enough or... You know what I mean? It was just pure like create creativity going on so that's what i got going on so far with bringing in some yellows um i might want to make her face a little bit darker as time goes on but it, like like i said i'm just trying to layer go layer by layer on the face and on the hair and the body i don't want to go too far with it like as far as applying too dark of a line onto this drawing would just totally kill it, you know what I mean? So, when I'm drawing, I gotta be delicate with, with portraits. Cause then you make the lines too dark or something ends up looking like a whole different person. 
<laughs> you know, so. So anyway, I'm back again. Here is what it looks like so far. Looking good, I think. Lady of Fire Poetry. Getting ready to throw down some poetry in nature, perhaps. Because, okay, so, like I said, I'm going to draw some leaves on the side when I'm done with it to fill out the space, the empty space. Um, but yeah, I was continuing with um, slowly adding color to her face. Now I'm adding a little red. I put in yellow. Now I'm adding a little bit of red. And I'll probably come in with some more of that terracotta color that I was using in the beginning. So if you haven't caught that, catch the first part of this video series. And it'll show you how I um, started off with terracotta, that color, and started adding colors to it little by little. <clears throat> so yeah, she looks cool. So I'm going to come in with some terracotta color here. Is this terracotta? Terra... what? Senna. So this isn't the terracotta. It's called Senna. And then I've got... Oh, this is the terracotta. So it looks like the terracotta is a little bit more red than the Senna. So I think I might want to do the Senna since it's already used red. And leave the terracotta behind because I already have red, enough red in there I think so for what I'm trying to do so I'm trying to be really careful with adding the color in <laughs> so let's see if we get dark here Usually when I'm drawing, I'm really quiet. <laughs> That's why I wasn't sure how I would do this part, I mean, this tutorial, because I'm usually just, like I said, I'm just usually quiet, really into what it is I'm doing. But I don't mind talking to you guys while I do this. <clears throat> drawing definitely teaches you patience, if you didn't have it before, because, you know, if you're patient, you'll come out with something really nice and special, you know, especially for somebody that you find that's a really cool person. <coughs> and you want to give them uh, a likeness as best as you can. So I think I'm going to come to the end of what I'm going to do for today on this because I don't want to ruin it. I want to keep it, you know, as nice as I can. I'm using a little, I didn't show you, I'm using a little bit of this violet instead of black for shading. So it was coming underneath the nose for a little bit of shading with the violet. So <clears throat> yeah, I'm using that instead of black. Sometimes it's cool to use those kind of dark colors, not using all the way black, but using dark colors just to um, add something different, different dimension. It'll add a slight bit of variation of color with the, with the violet in there. And I'm going to come out under, with, under the eyes with a little bit of violet. See how I'm doing here on this eye. I'm coming in with a little bit of violet underneath the eye. Because as you see in the photograph, her eye, underneath her eye is dark and above her eye is dark. But not too dark. And that's why I'm trying to slowly, slowly make it darker. She's kind of got eyebrows like mine. They're very thin and sparse. Uh, obviously, these aren't my, I, I drew these eyebrows on. <laughs> But yeah, her eyebrows are like mine. They're like thin and sp sparse, but cool looking. And uh, trying to capture that as much as I can. And yeah, I think I'm going to, like I said, I'm just going to come underneath the eye on the other side and try to do a little bit of that on the top, on the top of the eye, just a bit. And then I'm going to be done for today. <laughs> With this, I don't want to push it, you know? Just a little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. So, so I'm using the I'm using the violet colored pencil to uh, darken the, the line on the eyelids. So, so that pops out a little bit more. See that? Yeah. What a beautiful smile. Beautiful person trying to inspire we're not trying to just doing it because that's what she's all about she's 
you know we inspire people all the time we don't even realize it you know just by the things that we do offering up our gifts to the world so I hope you guys do that do the best you can to offer up your gifts to the world whatever your gifts are <laughs> because we're all talented in our own way we all have our own gifts you may not draw you may write, you know, you may sing, you may play an instrument, you might rap, you might, uh, all kinds of things. You might create clothing, jewelry, what have you. There's so many artists out there that are creating in their own way. And they're liking to share it with the world because they know that that is why they came here to share, share their gifts. So this is how looking so far. I think I'm going to bring this to a close and stop. But this is how Lady of Sun, <laughs> Lady of Fire poetry, I almost said Sunfire. Lady of Fire poetry is looking so far. I think she looks really magnificent. So far, so good. And we're going to keep going on. I am going to keep going on with this in the next, next, I guess, next step of this how to draw a portrait with colored pencil. So yeah, here it is. I'll put them side by side before we leave out of and conclude today's show. So here she looks like. Okay, this is her, the drawing, and this is her, the photograph. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And I hope that watching this series really inspires you to try to draw. I mean, you don't have to be perfect. You can just have fun. And that's what I'm doing is I'm having fun. I've been drawing for a long time. So the more you draw, the better you get. Every day, if you draw every day, you start to get better. You practice a certain thing, you get better at it. Like, um, I'm starting to practice drawing hands and legs and doing more action poses um, just on my own. And I'm getting better at it. So yeah. So yes, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time, which will probably be tomorrow. Alrighty guys, stay creative. Peace.